Well, good morning. Glad to see each and every one of you and here today and want to welcome you to our worship service today at the Orangevale Seventh-day Adventist Church. For those of you watching online, I'd like to also extend a welcome and hope that you have a very blessed Sabbath. We have a few announcements today. Today, of course, is our communion service or the Lord's Supper. How many of you, hopefully all of you, picked up one of these emblems out at the desk as you came in? Excellent. So when we did this before at the uh, parking lot, I know it was a bit of a challenge to figure out how to open these. And so I think, Pastor John, we have a little video to demonstrate this, don't we? <laughs> Do we have that ready? Excellent. Let's, let's show that. Hopefully you can see that in the video that when you open these, it has to be done by faith, not by sight. Because <laughs> unless you have your reading glasses, which I don't have today, that little plastic covering over the wafer is invisible. And you have to pull that off, not the foil underneath before you get to the juice. So I wish all of you the best in your endeavors at that today. <laughs> okay. So a special thank you to all of those who uh, were able to come out for the uh, Vespers last night, that sounds like it was a, we unfortunately couldn't make it, it was a wonderful time I hear, some s'mores, and want to thank everybody who have participated in that and helped provide uh, the s'mores and all, thank you so much. We also have the holidays approaching, and during that time we'd like to be able to keep in touch with you, to communicate with you. I know I get texts from the church office uh, when they have information to send out, and hopefully most of you are getting those uh, informational texts. If you are not, you can sign up by texting to OVSDA info, the information's on your screen right there, and text it to that number, the 916-560-1915. We'd like to continue to stay in touch as much as we can. After our service today, we are in need of three volunteers to help wipe down the pews and disinfect things afterwards. Uh, each week we've been having people help out, and if you are able to do that, uh, please uh, let our deacon, is that Danny Kwan today? Or is it Mark? Yeah, is that correct? Uh, please see him afterwards, and he'll direct you how to help out. And thanks you so much for your assistance there. I think we have another slide here on a craft fair that is coming up. And that is going to be tomorrow, Sunday, November 1, already November. And it's going to be between 11.30 and 3.30 p.m. for our fourth annual craft fair. It will be held outdoors in the parking lot uh, by the school track. So I encourage you to come out for that. I think you'll have a great time. Yes, Missy, thank you very much, yes. All right. We also have... Another slide here on uh, prayers. If you have prayer requests, you know, normally we always had that during our singing with the basket, but we now have a virtual way of sending in prayer requests. If you have particular needs or prayer requests, you can go to ovsda.org to send those so that we can continue to pray for you, and we would like to have that privilege to do that. Also, if you would like to talk to someone from the church, we have a phone number. Is there a slide on that one also? Okay, well, I will give you the number, and you can write it down. If you call the number, then it will connect you with someone to talk to from the church. And so a nice service we have. It's area code 916-245-0508. Uh, one more time, 916-245-0508. We want you to know that you are, each and every one of you, important to us, and we want to stay in touch in any way that we can. 
Uh, one additional thing this morning, I think we had some technical difficulties on our uh, children's program. So instead, that is going to be happening today online at 3 o'clock. So if you'd like to see that with your kids, look at it on the church website. That will be at 3 o'clock today. Okay, I have a, a text I'd like to read as our call to worship. It comes from Psalm 27. And each of us is here, I think, to seek the Lord today. I know that I am, and uh, I know that God has a special blessing for each one of us. In Psalm 27, it says, One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. May God be found by each of us today as we seek for Him here. Good morning, everyone. I am Pastor John, and I'm uh, happy to welcome you here today. It's good to see all of your faces, and it's good to be together. It's now time for our poll, so we should have that up there. Let's see, there we go, excellent. Um, so you can scan that. Um, there's also a link that you can type in. We'll, we'll have some different ways maybe in the future. We're, this is, uh, we're using our tried and true poll. And uh, everybody give, um, in the, do you remember when it used to be you were taking a test and writing answers and it said, when, we, when I see your pencil down on your desk, then we can go on to the next one or the test is over. So raise your hand, everybody logged in? All right. Let's do this. What do you most enjoy about attending services here at Orangevale? Is it being together and worshiping? Uh, is it being online? Uh, is that helping me stay connected? Or I'm just getting back into church and I'm glad to be here. So, excellent. Thank you. So, oh, we, well, we're a little bit hot. Okay. There we go. I'm working on, you know, I have a lot of extra words. And you can tell that because you can't even read my whole question there. So, I got to delete words. I got like, I don't know. Perfect. Excellent. All right, we're going to go on to the next one. What are some ways that our volunteer teams can create an even more welcoming atmosphere here at our church? You are important and you matter. So is it prayer and support on our spiritual journey? Would it be uh, during the wintertime hot drinks in the foyer? Uh, COVID approved, of course. I don't know how I would do that. We could, um, or kids' activity bags and singing as soon as possible, or everything above, all the above. So let us know what would be important. I know I miss the kids' activity bags. I like wiki sticks. Wiki sticks are fun. So, who who does not know what a wiki stick is? Okay, I can see Kathy, I will help you. I will help you learn what a wiki stick is. They, they've taken wax colored string and cut it into lengths about maybe eight inches long and you can create different kinds of things with it. You can make glasses and bicycles and all different people. So all different kinds of things there. Excellent. And our, I think this is our last one. What is special about our theme today? We get to add an extra hour to 2020. Yay! <laughs> Truly, it's happening. Uh, it, it's, it's part of the horrors of October 31. Uh, it's, it's birthday of John Adams in 1735. Uh, we remember the sacrifice of Jesus, or I have no idea, but I'm blessed. And some of you... Do you ever find yourself in a situation and you think, I don't even know what's going on here. I don't know what I'm doing, but uh, here I am. So sometimes that's the situation. And we at least have one person there like that. So that's good. Yes, you know, you've already been instructed. Today is our communion. And yes, we wish you the best in opening those containers. 
Um, there, there are, there's another container option that I'll explore for the church family, but at least we can remember. Um, and those symbols are just that. I remember a time growing up when I thought, what a, what a disappointment. A tiny little cup of juice, it's barely a drop. So kids, have you ever thought, you know, what in the world? And a little piece of, like, it's not even a piece of toast. It's tiny, right? A crumb. And I remember growing and thinking about this and reflecting and realizing that it's a symbol, right? That's not my whole meal. It's a symbol to draw my attention to something else, a larger greater spiritual reality. So that's what we have today. And we're here to acknowledge that being part of the family of God is super important to us. So thank you so much for being here. And um, now we're gonna, I'm gonna let you know about our online giving, but there's something that I have that I want to give to you. And that is, I would like to give you thanks on behalf of Heather and Hunter and Jonah and myself. Thank you so much for such a fantastic and overwhelming outpouring during Pastor Appreciation Month here. Uh, the, the cards, the gift cards, the gifts, the, the mugs. The, I have a lifetime supply of Snickers bars. <laughs> not, not just a Pastor Appreciation Month supply. Um, and I better make it last a lifetime or I'll, you know, that will not be good. Got to, got to spread it out. Um, but just all of that, thank you so much. Um, there was a, the, the big candy poster board, Rebus, um, and there was a, another poster that was made with pictures and signed, and just thank you. Um, it, it feels kind of like we could get in an endless loop. I appreciate you for appreciating me, and then it's just like, you know, where does it go? I don't know. But thank you. I'll, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Uh, there are ways that we, part of, part of what happens when we give offerings is that our tithes and offerings are a way of us recognizing that everything that we have comes from our Father in Heaven, right? Every, everything, everything that we are, every breath that we, that we experience is a gift from God. And so our tithes... The 10%, that's, that's, and that's the, kind of the very first thing that's off the top that is, a, that is part of what God asks us to do. It's a symbol of thank you. It's a symbol of trust. It's returning a, a percentage and acknowledging that everything comes from God. And there are other, all of the offerings that we give are in addition to that. And they're, in their part, it contributes to the work that happens it contributes to our Christian fellowship here. It contributes to our outreach in the community, our educational evangelism and ministry. So you can do that online. There's a giving line on our website. There's also an offering box at the back. The slot is in the front. Jonah made a little arrow pointing you to the slot. If you look for a slot on the top, you'll be disappointed. The slot is in the front. So, anyways, we, we are grateful in advance. I want to say thank you for that. Your, your contributions, especially to our church mission budget, are really important. Last month, we only made about half of our budget, a monthly budget. And I gave you some... See, the problem was, is that I gave you a lot of thanks for ending the year. We ended the year 20, uh, 2019... And in the fiscal year, in June, we ended well, our budget balanced. Whenever your family budget balances, you say what? Thank you, Jesus, right? Okay, so we, we, we balanced our budget for the year. We've gotten off to a little bit of a rocky start. You all thought, hey, the pastor said we balanced the budget, that's great. We'll go and do other stuff. So don't forget the church. Remember the church, remember our mission here in your giving. Thank you very much. It's now time for our children's story. All right, can you guys hear me okay? Good morning, happy Sabbath Orangeville Church family. I'm so excited to see you all. 
And to our young friends, I'm so excited that you guys are here to worship with us and hear children's story, as well as our friends at home online. Thank you for being here. So today I'm going to share with you guys a story. And this story is a bit about communion because we have a special Sabbath today and we're going to talk about communion. So as Pastor John mentioned, there is a definition for communion. And I'm sure some of you have been thinking about it, but we're remembering the sacrifice of Jesus. And that is the main one. But there's also another definition to communion found in the Bible. And it means sharing. So how many of you guys in school or before, you've learned to share? Or even just with your siblings? Yeah. <laughs> I see even like family members raising their hands. Yes. Sharing is very important. So we're going to be talking about that part of communion. So last year, I went on a mission trip to Peru. Do you guys know where Peru is? Or have any of you visited? Awesome. Yes, yeah, so Peru is in South America. And so we got to go there and learn about Jesus and share him with other people. And we were building a school. But we also got to see some pretty cool things. Do any of you kids out there, do you guys like animals? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we love animals. So let's see, can you guys think of any animals that might be in Peru? Any? I heard a llama. Yes, so they had lots of llamas. And unfortunately, I don't have a huge llama stuffed animal with me. But I have this coat, and I think it looks like a llama. <laughs> so if I put it on, this is how furry they were. There were so many furry llamas everywhere. And they were even so big with all their fur that they jumped at me and I almost fell over. <laughs> that was a fun time. And then what are some other animals that we can think of that are in Peru? Anyone? Alpaca, yes. So just like the other side, there were fuzzy furry alpacas there too. And they were so cute and they had their babies with them and they were really fun to see. And then let's see, there's one more that we saw quite often. Do you guys recognize this? <laughs> they had a lot of sheep. <laughs> so you see them in their little herds walking around. So those are the kinds of animals we saw there. But even just beyond the cute, fun animals, there were some other things that happened that were pretty amazing. When we were there, we had the opportunity to share. So we were there to share our time and our resources to help build a school and some classrooms. But even more than that part of sharing, it was really neat because the community we were there with, the people in the town of Lari Puchuri, that was the name of the town, they also shared their time with us. They shared their time and they were working on the classrooms with us and they also shared their delicious food because the food there is, ooh, it's delicious. And they also shared something even greater. They shared their kindness with us. They shared their kindness and we were so grateful so before I went to leave on the mission trip, my mom actually came up with a good way to share. And she said, why don't we give them some gifts for the students? Now, if you guys are in school, or even if you're grown up now, we still like receiving gifts, right? Does anyone like receiving gifts today? Yeah. <laughs> so she thought of some cute ideas to share. So for those of you who are in Sabbath school classes, have you guys ever heard of felts? You can just shout it out. Yeah, so we have some felts here. So she got a group of friends together and they did a felt party. <laughs> and they all did their own felts and they cut it out and they sent it with us to Peru. So we have some felts here of children and Jesus. And so they sent us all these felts so that we could share with the kids. And they had a church and a Sabbath school just like here, too. So we were able to share these with the kids. Now, in addition to felts, there were some other things. Do you guys like to receive goodies at school? Yeah, so we had markers. We had markers for the kids who liked markers. We had some whistles, because those are pretty fun, too. <laughs> we had some Frisbees, some more markers I'm seeing. <laughs> And yeah, we had a whole bunch of little gifts. And we had some crafts, like these crosses. Did you guys have those in your Sabbath schools? 
I know if you're in my mom's Sabbath school, you have a lot of these too. <laughs> so we had a lot of those gifts and activities and we were able to share them with the kids and it was really neat to see the smiles on everyone's faces, to see them giving and receiving. But now, giving's a little different, right? Because what's going on right now? It may not be the same way we can give. Yeah, because of the pandemic, the coronavirus. So it's not as easy to go out and hand someone something right away, right? It's a little different. So we can't maybe give in the same way that we gave on that trip. So let's think about some ways we can give to people today. Because the Bible still calls us to give. Jesus calls us to still give. So what are some ways that we can give? Let's see. We can give donations. So for those of you, I know Pastor John mentioned giving. So we can give to people in the schools through donating, if you guys like school supplies. I know some of these nice ones in here were from the dollar store. <laughs> so thankfully, it's not too expensive. Um, but you can give the donations for the school. You can give tithe. You can give donations to even someone you know who might need some extra love on the holidays, too. Let's think of some other ways to give. How about your time? Time is a pretty good one. So for time, right now we can't do as many outreach activities in the same way, but we could give our time to our mommies and daddies, our brothers and sisters, our family and friends. We can give them our time. And even if they're not right next to us, maybe we could call them or write them a card or give them something happy as a way to give our time to them. And the last one that I think is really important, the people in the community that we were with, they shared their kindness with us. And I think kindness is a beautiful way to share with people around us. It could be with people right in your home, kindness to your family. It could even be kindness with people you don't see very often or that you call over the phone. It could be people that you see on the street, even if we can't go up necessarily, we can always say hi or say that we're praying for people. And that's the last thing too that I want to leave us with today, is prayer. We can give and share. No, oh, that might be my hair. We can share by praying for one another because we love our Lord and we want everyone to look to Him and to love Him as well. So through prayer, we can always pray for one another. And I'm going to read a verse with you. And I apologize as I don't have the big book with me. But if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn with me to Hebrews. So Hebrews chapter 13. This is towards the back. So Hebrews 13, and it's going to be verse 16. It says, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. So what does that mean? Let's not forget to be nice to other people, to do good for other people. Even if we can't be next to them all directly, there are still many ways we can share our love for God with them or to share love with them, God's love for them. And so that's what I'll leave you with today, boys and girls. So let's go ahead and bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this Sabbath and this time that we get to spend with one another, whether here in person or online, Lord. We are truly blessed to worship you. Thank you for all that you do for us, and please help us to remember to share our kindness and our time and our love for you, Jesus, with all those around us. Thank you for all that you do for us. Amen. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. It's so nice to be here in person. Um, for the last many months, it's all online, which we absolutely love online. It's, I look forward to Sabbath every week so we could sit there in our jammies and watch the, the church service. It's, it's very special, even though we can't always be here together. So, and thank you for everybody here. It's so great to see all of your faces. Um, I'm going to be reading 
the scripture today is going to be in Joshua 4, verse 4 through 7. So this verse says, So Joshua called together the twelve men he had chosen, one from each of the tribes of Israel. He told them, Go into the middle of the Jordan, in front of the ark of the Lord your God. Each of you must pick up one stone and carry it out on your shoulder, twelve stones in all, one for each of the twelve tribes of Israel. We will use these stones to build a memorial. In the future, your children will ask you, what do these stones mean? They remind us that the Jordan River stopped flowing when the Ark of the Lord's Covenant went across. These stones will stand as a memorial among the people of Israel forever. I have a maker, he formed my heart, before even time began, my life was in his hands, he knows my name. me when I call. I have a father. He calls me his own.
I will be still though you are God. Let me watch you tears upon this road. I will soar with you above the stars. Whether you are king above the flood, I will be still though you are God. I will be still and know you are God. At this time, it's our privilege to approach our Heavenly Father in prayer. I'd like to invite any of those who are able to, here and at home, to kneel as we pray. <clears throat> Our Father, what a privilege it is that we can come to you and that you hear us and that you know all the concerns of our hearts. Lord, today I want to ask a special blessing on each person who is worshiping you here in this sanctuary and online at home today. May we know that we have been with you, and may we be blessed as a result. Lord, you have put this church here as a light in this community, and I pray that each of us will share your love with those we come into contact with, that we can share the blessings we have received with those around us, and that they also may know you. Lord, there are many who have concerns today. We ask for your special blessing. Those who are struggling with health issues, those who may be struggling with uh, financial issues, work issues. Lord, bless each one. May your will be done in each of our lives. And may we know above all, Lord, that we are walking side by side with you. We look forward to that day, Lord, when we will see you in person. We thank you for the communion service that we're celebrating today, that as you have reminded us through the emblems that we will share, we are reminded of your wonderful sacrifice for us and also the hope we have of your soon coming also. I pray for our pastor, Lord, that you'll bless him. Thank you for the work he does here in this church. Continue to guide him. May his words today be words from you that will guide us to your throne. Lord, we thank you that you love us so much, and we praise your name today. In Jesus' name, amen. When I fear my faith will fail, Christ will hold me fast When the tempter would prevail He will hold me fast I could never keep my hold Through life's fearful path For my love is often cold He must hold
justice has been satisfied, he will hold me fast. Raised with him to endless life, he will hold me fast. Till our faith is turned to sight, when he comes at last. So as we get ready to um, take our emblems, to take the, the bread and the juice, it'll be just a few moments, so don't go preemptively opening that. Um, you'll be very unhappy trying to keep it there without spilling. Um, but I just want to, um, to let you know that we are going to start with a video. The, our, you can tell for communion, right? We talk, I talked to you earlier about we have these emblems, these small symbols that remind us of something much bigger, right? And um, there, there's something else. We all remind people, right? We, we, are, we are actually reminders ourselves. So I, I, was remembered last, I was reminded last night of how good and how free it is to be a little one. So Joy and J Jael, right, and Joshua, they were reminding me how it feels to dance before the Lord. Last night at Vespers, they were having so much joy during our, our music time. And there was another reminder, another dad talked to me and said, you know, in all of this uh, social distancing and all of the challenge that we're facing right now, my kids seem to deal with it much easier, right? They adapt, they just, they, they kind of can get along with it. And they're not always complaining. And adults, that should be a lesson to us, right? The Lord said, unless you become like little children, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven, all right? There's not going to be a whole lot of complaining in heaven. So we might as well stop it now. Just stop it. We, we have these things as a reminder, and we are good reminders to each other, right? We are reminders to be encouraged. We are reminders of God's care in our lives. And so the video that you're going to see is a special video that Mr. Davis prepared that has a reminder for us of what the last few weeks of our school year was like. And it's a very special, uh, very special video. So we're going to watch that and then I will be in the back, uh, in the baptistry area, and we'll um, take our communion emblems at that time. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Lord, Thank you, parents, for working with us during distance learning. Without you, we couldn't have done this. Orange Bell School families, we miss you and are praying for you. Love your teachers and staff.
welcome to Orangeville Admin School. This is day 30, day 30 of distance learning. And Mrs. Mappa, we're missing something here, Mrs. Mappa. No, we are. We're missing some great students in yes. the classroom. It is you. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Sochelle and Distance. There are twins this year. Are, are Sochelle and Distance here? Oh, there's Sochelle. And, and there's Distance. Perfect. Yes. Six feet apart all the time. Tonight we are honoring very special teachers. Miss Tache and Miss Kramer. show you around the school just to let you see what we see on kind of a normal day. I'm looking at all the homework that's been turned in and folders that are getting ready to go back out again. Miss Sterling, Miss Sterling, what are you doing right now? I am recording work that's been completed and turned in so that I can get it back to the students. So they can... <laughs> uh, we're one day closer to having this uh, history and uh, wow. It, you're gonna make it this week. You're gonna make yes. it this week. Now, wasn't that a good reminder? That was a good reminder. 
when I think about that, there's some things, um, especially when we go through very difficult times, uh, there's some things that we don't want to remember, right? And sometimes we say, you know what, I'd, some experiences I just sooner forget. I was thinking about the scripture, and thank you, Misty, for reading the scripture today. The, the story of the Israelites and their journey and their sojourn and all of the years that they spent in the wilderness and all of the experiences they had, it was not a shining moment most of the time for the people of Israel on their journey to, to realizing and experiencing what God had ultimately promised them, right? It, it's a lot of God's provision and a lot of their faithfulness, faithlessness, a lot of their complaining, right? And sometimes when we, com when we complain and when we are afraid and then we see how God meets us in our need, it, it's kind of embarrassing. And sometimes you'll get through a situation, you'll think, well, that wasn't so bad after all. Why was I so worried, right? And, and, it, and it's kind of embarrassing on our part when we see how much we doubt God. And so I love that, that imagery of the Israelites taking those stones and making a monument. And when their children, I love it, said, your children are going to ask, what does this mean, right? Um, there was, there was one time, my dad had, he had hurt himself something and he had a scar. And I remember as a kid always asking my dad and said, dad, wh where did you get that scar? Now my dad was part of, he was, he was a, a member of the, the Navy and the Marines and he was in the Pacific theater. And I, as a little kid, I always imagined my dad kind of, uh, and he actually was in the Battle of Okinawa, and I had imagined him being on the beach there and, you know, bullets flying. And so I saw this scar that he had, and I said, were you shot, right? And sometimes he would say yes to impress me, and I was like, I'm sure my eyes got five times bigger. Man, because my dad was shot in battle, and, and he survived. And yeah, I think it was just like he probably was doing something with a knife, and the knife slipped, and he cut himself or something, right? Uh, but I remember asking him about that. And, and I think about that story, and I think about growing up and all the things that I asked my parents. Um, we want our parents to explain things to us. And I, can, I, I, I am right there at that place where Moses is uh, where they're telling the people to take the stones, and your kids are going to ask you, what did these stones mean? And you're going to tell them, the waters parted, right? Now, the problem is that the, they didn't really pay attention. They heard the details, but they didn't grasp the meaning. Because the details of the story were that the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came and the waters parted in the Ark and the people were able to pass through. Generations later, they thought that there was something miraculous about the Ark. And they treated it as a talisman and they thought, if we have the ark with us, nobody can defeat us. The ark's magic and, and, and it means that we'll always be protected. What did God let happen to the ark? He let the Philistines take it, right? It, the people missed the, the, the core meaning. The core meaning of that memorial is that God had led them each and every step of the way, that he had provided for them, that he had been a cloud to give them shade during the day, that he had been a pillar of fire to, to provide them warmth and light at night, that, that he had provided them food when there was no food, that he had provided them water when there was no water, that they were his people and he loved them. When we take the emblems, we're not going to take them quite yet, but I'm going to get my cup out here. When, when we take this juice and eat this bread, this, this, this small piece of unleavened bread, it, it, it's not just the importance of those, it's what they represent and what they remind us of. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. 
God loves each and every one of us so much that he is willing to do everything possible within his infinite power to redeem us, to restore us, to, to bring us back to him. It says in other, the, through the prophets, God said that he has drawn us, he has pulled us to him with ropes of love, right? N not, not chains of slavery, but ropes of love. He's, he's poured out his heart to us, for us. He wants us back. And he doesn't just want us back now. He wants us back forever. He wants to restore us into the loving friendship relationship with him that he always intended from the very, very beginning, from the foundation of the world. And so that's what we do. Uh, the, the memories are so important. Remembering Jesus' love for us, his sacrifice for us, so important. And that's why we do this four times a year, at least. Jesus said, as often as you drink this cup, as often as you eat this bread, remember him until we are reunited. There's going to come a time when we look into his face and we see the one whose blood this juice symbolizes, whose body this bread represents. We're going to see him. And, and it's going to be, it, it's going to be almost probably like any, unlike anything that we can imagine. But I do know that there are times when, you, when you're separated from someone you love and you talk to them on the phone, but it's, kind, it's almost painful maybe because you so want to be with them, right? You can hear them, but it's just not the same. We can FaceTime, but it's just not the same. Uh, class, you can see your teacher, but Zooming just isn't the same. We want to be together. And that's the way these symbols are. It's bittersweet. It, it, it's sweet because we, we know through the life and death and resurrection how much God loves us. But we still are not present with him right now, and we want to be. The worse things get in the experience of this world, the deeper our longing is for Jesus. And so we're reminded of how much he loves us, but we want to be with him. And so it, it, let that be true for you. The hope, the promise, the assurance of God's love, but the expectation of that which is unseen becoming seen, of that which is distant becoming close. At the heart of the word, communion is together with. And today we proclaim God's promise that we will, in the near future, be together with him. That is the day that we're longing for. Paul is going to come and share with us a, a reading. He's going to read to us the words proclaimed by Paul in 1 Corinthians. He will have a blessing over our symbols, and then we will take our bread and juice. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Please bow your heads with me. Dear Lord, as we partake together in these symbols of your broken body and your spilled blood, these symbols that remind us of the immense sacrifice you gave for us, Lord, let them become a part of us, not only our physical body, but also spiritually that we may participate in your sacrifice, in your death, in your life, your broken body. May we have a sense of how real that is. And as Pastor John says, we look forward to that day when it won't be just a symbol, but we will see you face to face. May that day be soon. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now it's time to remove the first layer of your communion cup. In Matthew 26, verse 26, we read the words that Jesus spoke to his disciples and um, the, the account that is given there. Uh, Matthew 26, verse 26 says this. While they were eating, Jesus took some bread and after a blessing, he broke it and he gave it to the disciples and he said, take and eat, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. That is the day that we proclaim and that we long for, the day when we are able to share face-to-face -face with Jesus in his Father's kingdom. We will now close our service um, with a final blessing, um, and it's the special music um, by uh, Jesse and Jesse, and it's entitled The Blessing. So let us enjoy that now.
your family, to your children, and their children, and their children. May and his favor be upon you in a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, This concludes our communion service, our worship this morning, and I guess it's afternoon, actually, so we are very grateful to be able to um, experience God's blessings, and as you exit, and um, we have volunteers who will stay by and sanitize the church following our service, I invite you to visit outdoors, and I would like to also encourage each one of you to spend this week being reminded of the good news that if God is for us, who can be against us? May you be blessed this week.